A uh, very good show. Did I get your name right? Kostaki Econ- Economopolis, right? I've been working on it. Yeah, all right. I'll give you a name on it. That's pretty good. <laughs> right. I'll take it. I was in Jacksonville, Florida. The host comes out and goes, give it up for Econo Kakalakapus. You were quite close. And you just come flying right out and, and everything's good. Yeah. Uh, well, you're no uh, stranger to Laugh Fest and you're certainly no stranger to the Midwest. You played here before, right? Yeah, I love the Midwest. In fact, uh, I'm in the Midwest almost every week. <laughs> are you well you live in new york um are you from the, the midwest originally or no it just happens to be where the radio world like grabbed me and kept me on the radio all the time so that's where i could sell some tickets mm-hmm. and michigan's been great to me i actually lived uh very briefly in east lansing i had a girlfriend from grand rapids and so i've spent a lot of time around there for other reasons too and then since the radio exposure took off, I've been coming to Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, that region quite a lot. Well, then you, you can kind of explain this to me, because Jim Gaffigan, who's also another New Yorker, uh, yeah. la- last year was at Laugh Fest, and he said, you know, this is a great event, but I only think it could happen here. Do you kind of get what he was saying? There is there's something about the Midwest kindness, and the, the people can gather around a thing. It's very hard to focus that sort of energy in a insanely busy, you know, scene like New York City. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think there's something like that sort of galvanizes the community. There's a lot of volunteers, and it's grown into this gigantic thing. So, yeah, I think think that might, could only happen there. Yes, I agree with that. And, uh, well, now you bring up something else, too, because, uh, like you said, you're not from the Midwest, but you seem to have an affinity for this. Uh, And when you start out getting your voice in comedy... You don't really know where it's going to go, do you? Well, that's a good point. And I've sort of, I, a, a little bit, have sort of bounced around. Because when I started, I was a lot more sort of socio-political. I have a master's degree in political science. And I got a little jaded over the years. Plus, it's sort of an expensive capital to mm-hmm. spend mm-hmm. for the crowd. When you do political jokes, A, they're timely and they're over fast. And B, if you have any teeth in them at all, half of the people who are listening hate you immediately. <laughs> So it's much easier to make fun of the lions. We can all agree on that. Yes. <laughs> so I've kind of morphed into – I'm doing more personal stuff now. I talk about my, I'm relatively newly married, and I have a daughter, and uh, you know I'm doing football jokes. And my act has sort of evolved over the years for sure. Uh, it's funny you bring that up because I was just talking with uh, Michael Costa, and we were talking about sports and jokes. And I always felt that uh, sports should have more humor in it, but people take it so damn seriously. It's so funny to hear you say that. When I developed the thing that I do now all over the place, it's called Quick Snaps. It's all topical NFL jokes. Mm -hmm. I developed it as a radio segment to pitch to sports radio. And you know this world better than I do. When I started pitching it to them, almost always I got some version of, hey, this is great. We don't do this. We're X's and O's. Like you don't do jokes about the subjects you're talking about. You're an entertainment show. Yeah. No, no, we're a sports show. Okay. It's weird to me that a lot of the sports guys are very serious about what they do. Oh yeah, and you you think about that reaction that um, I can't think of his name now. The guy who's on Fox who does the impersonations. Oh yeah. Yeah. Caliendo. Frank. Right. Frank Caliendo. Yeah. Um, the reaction he initially got was like they'd go back to the crew and they would just be stone faced sober. <laughs> And you'd go, really? That was he's, funny. He's broken them open. You know, like they laugh with him now. You know, I think it took a while, but he he earned their love. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's interesting to me because, to me, that the reason I developed it was kind of going backwards. Like I thought, if I was a sports guy, I would love to have a guy like me come on and do jokes about the thing that just happened yesterday. And then it could be a jumping off point as soon as he hangs up to talk about those things and say, was he right about this? Was this a fair dig? So I thought it would be wang, you know, an easy pitch, and it turned out it's an easy sell on morning radio, more mainstream entertainment, zoo crew kind of radio, right? And sports radio is like, man, eh, we don't really do that. Are you a Lions <laughs> fan from always? Um, from from my childhood, yeah. I can, you know, I go back to the days of Bill Munson and Mel Farr, superstar, and all that. Wow. And yeah. uh, it's... I'm a modern Lions fan because I drafted uh, Calvin Johnson right. in my keeper fantasy league. <laughs> and my team name, this is true to this day, is called Megatronomopolis. <laughs> Which is perfect. Well, it wasn't a perfect season because he was hurt a lot. But uh, we didn't make the playoffs this year. But I love that I love that guy. And I also went to the University of Georgia. And so I root for Matt Stafford as well. Stafford actually met at a Super Bowl thing and was talking to him. And I pitched him some of the jokes I was doing about the Lions at the time. And he was like, oh, those are great. 
they were 5 and 0 oh for a little window of time and i go wow the lions haven't had a record this good since the christians <laughs> <laughs> and they were and they were undefeated back then too right. yeah and they right and then they had the year where they were completely defeated not too long ago and i was doing jokes about that too i was like oh and 16 wow baby blue and white same team colors as the handicap coincidence <laughs> yeah i'm it's... just saying if you're wearing a lions jersey this year you should be able to park wherever the hell you want you, you know your team's bad when you realize if they had no legs at all, same record. <laughs> so the Lions have been fun for me always. I've been rooting for them, and they're, you know, they've been – their poor owner died this year. I didn't know – you know this. I didn't know this. So I had to look it up for the jokes. He owned that team for 50 years. 50 years, yep. 5-0. And during that time, they had one playoff win and no trips to the Super Bowl. Or as the Jaguars would call that, pretty good run. <laughs> pretty good. We're done. Ta- I'm thinking.